Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to look at how to make a simple evergreen tree in Unity. You don't need to use any external 3D modeling software, you can just use Unity, so you don't have to learn how to use Blender or anything like that to do this. You just need to download the free to use Pro Builder. There's a couple ways you can do that. You can either go to the Asset Store and search for Pro Builder, or you can just go to Window, go to Package Manager, and then download Pro Builder. Again, it's free to use, it's owned by Unity, so it doesn't cost you anything, and it's officially supported by Unity. It's a great way to create uh, 3D objects for the early stages of a game, so when you're just prototyping or you're trying to do a proof of concept, or maybe if you're doing a game that has more kind of simple and stylized graphics, you might find that this is good enough that, again, you don't need a 3D modeling program, that what you can make in Pro Builder is sufficient. So once you've done that, you'll have a new tools menu. You'll see Pro Builder, and you're going to choose Pro Builder Window. We're not going to cover everything here. There's no need to because, as I said in this video, we're just going to look at how to make a simple tree. So you're going to click on New Shape, and then you have a choice of several different shapes. It defaults to Cube. You're going to go down to Cone. And then this is important as far as how many sides it's going to have. So you're going to want an even number of sides. So let's make this, say, 24. And then we click on Build Cone. We close that, and we zoom in. Now, I've mentioned this in the other videos, but I'll do a quick mention here as well, and that it's important to differentiate between selecting an object or selecting an individual point selecting an edge which connects points or select a facing which is the surface between points and edges so right here we're just selecting the object as a whole this is the point select tool when you can select a single point this is an edge when you can select a whole edge you can see how the whole edge is green and then this is where you can select a facing so for this tutorial we're going to be selecting points what we're going to do is we're just going to select every other point and push it inwards. So make sure you have the Move tool selected. You have the Vertex selection. You just grab a point and you're just going to push it in. So depending on what angle you're looking at, you might have to push it off to the side a little bit too. So we're just using the visual X and Z axes. And then I'm just rotating this around. And again, you just want the Move tool. Like I said, you push one in, leave one out, push the next one in. You can see, because of the angle we're looking at, it's pushing it that way. So we're just going to want to push it along the both the X and Z axes to get it. Now, I'm, not, this, I, I'm obviously eyeballing this. I'm not saying exactly measuring it or anything like that because again this is really designed just for testing graphics uh, prototyping but you certainly can take more care if you want it to look uh, uh, you know exactly a certain way and really this portion of the tutorial is just rinse and repeat it's just a matter of selecting those points and pushing them in and then just rotating around Pushing them in. Again, just every other. And I was actually quite delighted when I found out about Pro Builder because I mentioned this was always a complaint of mine that I didn't think that Unity had enough tools for making 3D objects, particularly for indie developers, and that they would have to either start purchasing assets or learning how to use an external model a modeling program such as Blender. Instead, you can do it right in Unity. So the more Unity can become a one, an all-in-one solution, the better I think it is for indie developers. And sorry if I'm rambling, I just figured you don't want to me sit here in silence and just pointing and clicking at dots. But it really is rinse and repeat, like I said. As long as you've got the vertex selector, you're grabbing the move tool and then you're grabbing that vertex, you're grabbing that point, and you're just pushing it inwards towards the center. Okay. Now, this is the reason why it has to be an even number. 
because half are pushed out, half are pushed in. So if you have an odd amount, you're going to have a double somewhere. So for this particular method, you need to have an even amount. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a second object. So we're going to go to New Shape. We're going to go to Let's use pipe. And then for, actually not pipe, sorry, that one's hollow. We want cylinder. This is basically going to be the trunk. We might have to change its size later on, but this is to do a couple things. A, if the bottom of the tree is visible, you want there to be a trunk visible. It also is going to help you center everything. So let's just change the height of this to say like six, and we can always change it later. And we could also change its size later, but let's make it a little bit more narrow. Let's make it like a 0.4 radius. And again, just eyeballing this, I am not doing any kind of uh, math, just kind of eyeballing it. So you click on build, you can close that, go back to your move tool. This time you want the object selector. I'm going to say that a lot because it's very important when you're doing 3D modeling to know if you're selecting the object, the vertice, the edge or the facing. So you want the object so you can just, oops, sorry. So you can just take this and move it down. So again, like I said, the purpose of this is this is really the trunk. So it's gonna help you center everything. Okay. And at this point you can either shrink it or you can just push it down a little bit further so it's not protruding out. And the bulk of the cylinder you will not see because, as I said, it, it's a dual purpose. One, to line everything up. Two, to have a little bit at the bottom as your trunk. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add a material. Now, if it seems like I'm doing things kind of out of order, what happens is we're going to apply the material. That way we don't have to do it a bunch of times later. So we apply the material once. Then when we copy the shape, it's going to copy it with the material. So we're going to go to Material Editor. And what we need to do is we need to add a new material. So let's just right click down here, create, and we'll go to material and we will call this tree green. You can call it whatever you want. The name functionally doesn't mean anything. With the material selected, we're going to come up to Albedo and just give this like a dark green. Actually, I think it has to be a little bit darker, but that's fine. So now what you have to do is you can't just take it from here. You can't take the material from here and apply it. You need to put it into the material editor. So you're going to take the tree green, put it into the editor. Now, from the material editor, you can apply it. So once again, we want to make sure we have object selector. Select this, so we're going to select the cone, and then we just do tree green. Again, if you don't have objects selected, you might wind up painting just a single facing or an edge, that kind of thing. So you want to make sure you've painted the whole object. So again, my apologies if I see like I'm jumping around. It's because uh, once, you, you, once you have created the cone and you've sculpted it, you're going to want to make sure you do everything else to it. That way you don't have to apply the material a bunch of times. Not a big deal, but saves you a little bit of time in the long run. So what we're going to do now, suppose we could apply the material to here. I'm just going to use the one called dirt because I think that's just like a brown. Yeah, that's fine. Now we can close material. For now, we can close Pro Builder because now what we're going to do is we're just copying objects. So let's just move cylinder above cone. Come on. There we go, cone. So we're just going to copy the cone and paste it. And then we just move it down. Copy, paste, move it down. Copy. Paste, move it down. I know, I'm droning, sorry. Just rinse and repeat. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do one more. Did I move that one down? 
I did not. So like I said, we can always change the, size, uh, the length of the stump if we think it's too long. Okay, so a couple of things you can do. A, you might like this as it is that it's this long, thin, narrow tree, but there's a few problems with it. Generally speaking, with evergreens, you're expecting them to get wider, so we really should scale these out. But again, stylistically, you might want something long and narrow like that, like a forager, I believe. Uh, it's a gathering survival game, and I believe in Forager, the trees are like tall and thin like that. So I'm just going to scale them out, though. So we're just going to take each cone, and then we just scale them along the X and the Z. So let's make this like 1.2 and 1.2. So if you want it to still be circular, then you're going to want to change the X and the Z by the same amount. As you can see, it's like pushing off to the side, so we're going to realign them when we're done. And I'm going to actually increase them by the same amount, the same increment, so each one will be by an additional 0.2. So we started with 1.0, 1.2, 1.4, so just 1.6. Again, rinse and repeat. Just increment by the same amount, that 0.2. And you don't have to. This just makes it look... Sorry, 1.8 this time. Just makes it look kind of symmetric. And that one was 1.8, so this one's 2.0. And then the bottom one is like 2.2. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look down from above. That way it will be easier to see if it's aligned actually in this case no great way to see how it's lined so we'll push this up temporarily see if that helps yeah we'll just do this from the side i thought that would help so what we'll do is we'll just kind of push this one over you can always line it up by the points as well. Obviously, I'm just kind of winging this. I know the basic process, but you'll find different things work for you. I was thinking the cone would help us line it up, but really isn't necessary. And that looks pretty close. Things might be over a little bit too much. And then you can just do like a quick rotation around. And that came out pretty good. Now, again, you might stop here and say that looks good. But for what it's worth, you have these all lined up in a row. You may not want that. So what you might do is you might rotate each cylinder. Let's take a look to see how this looks to the camera. So we'll just run this. And it's kind of off to the side. So let's move our camera. All right, so let's just take our camera, push it over and down and over and in a little bit and down. Okay, not bad. Again, this isn't meant to be high-end graphics. This is meant to be something that you use for prototyping, proof of concept. Maybe you're trying to learn how to do collision detection. Much, much better than trying to learn how to use something like Blender. We did this in, what, 10 minutes, 12 minutes? And now that you've got this, you can turn this into a prefab and you can spawn it 10,000 times if you want. But again, if you want a little bit more variety in the way this looks, you can take each cone, use the rotate tool and just like randomly rotate this a little. Although they're kind of sticking through each other, so you might have to bump these up so they're a little bit more space in between them. So let's do that. I think that'll do it. Yeah, now they're not really cutting through each other. Okay, more rotation. 
Yep, still kind of cutting through each other. A little more space. There we go. Also, part of the issue is I might have pushed in a little bit too far. There you go. So now you have some variants. Now they're not lined up nice and neatly. Yeah. So a little bit of clipping here and there. So again, you can, there's a couple of things you could do. You could also, rather than having these, uh, rather than magnifying them or scaling them by 0 0.2, you could scale them by, by 0.15, things like that. And again, also, if you bring them down a little bit lower, that will take care of that. Like we can push this one up a little bit, push him down a little bit, and there. That took care of the clipping. Good. So I think that'll do it for this lesson. Again, it's not meant to be high-end graphics. It's meant to be a simple way for you to make graphics for when you're prototyping. Or again, if you're trying to do something with low poly, uh, low poly graphics, then this should certainly meet your needs. So I hope you found this helpful. If you want to see more tutorials like this, just let me know and I'll be more than happy to. So do a like and a comment to say what you'd like to see next. And again, basically, it's all through tools, it's all through Poro Builder, and it's just a matter of using a combination of shapes and moving the vertices, moving the facings, and things like that. Okay, so again, I hope this was helpful.